Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A financial analyst is this afternoon objecting to a total lockdown of the country to contain the spread of COVID-19. With 25 confirmed cases, Prime Minister Andrew Holness told Parliament last evening that if there is a significant increase in the coronavirus, the government would have no choice. We are now getting close to what is the inflection point on that curve when it starts to do this. The measures that we have put in place, yes. So, so they are there, they will, they will last for a period of time, but if the curve, as we have started to call it, starts to show exponential increase, then we will have to come with other measures, including some of the measures that you have suggested. So I'm saying to members, be prepared. We are going to have increased numbers. The numbers could increase rapidly, and we may have to progress to a total lockdown, but we are not there as yet. But I think the country is prepared, and people should use this time, people should use this time to be prepared for it. Um, because once it starts to spike, we are ready. For financial analyst Dennis Strong, the period for an effective lockdown to curb the spread of COVID-19 has passed. Mr. Chung is of the view that this should have been done when the crisis started. He says a total lockdown would not be feasible for the economy. Yes. We'll lock it down, but what we need to do, very importantly, is enforce the orders strictly. So if someone is caught, if someone reports that someone is violating the order, you move in your personal right away and lock up that person. If government's economic stimulus to cushion the effects of COVID-19 fails, it's prepared to suspend Jamaica's fiscal responsibility law. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark said the suspension would allow the country to deal with emergencies and severe economic contraction. I therefore want to assure the people of Jamaica that should things take a turn for the worse, Mr. Speaker, beyond what we all currently envisage and beyond the economic measures that we've put in place, we stand prepared, Mr. Speaker, to invoke the clauses into law, invoke the clauses in law that allow for its suspension and that require, very importantly, the independent verification of the Auditor General and to act accordingly within that law. It is important to put this on the table, Mr. Speaker. Hopefully, we will not need it. But if we do, I want the country to be assured that Jamaica has options that many of our neighbors do not, Mr. Speaker. And that is something to be thankful for. Dr. Clark was closing the budget debate in Parliament on Tuesday. Under the COVID stimulus program, $200 million has been set aside for small farmers, $150 million to the local government ministry for poor relief programs, and $200 million for the Constituents Development Fund. $1.2 billion will also be set aside for businesses in the tourism and related sectors. People who lose their jobs may get $54,000 from the government over three months. And in addition to the COVID-19 restrictions, the government is to improve care for the vulnerable. More from Giovanni Dennis. As COVID-19 restrictions tighten everyday movements, concerns have been raised about care for Jamaica's vulnerable. Last night, answers were provided. First up, the homeless. With immediate effect, the local authorities will be providing care packages on a daily basis for all persons living on the streets across the country. Mr. McKenzie says drop-in centers will be made available for homeless persons to visit and be checked by health authorities. They will also be given two meals daily. Next in line, the elderly. Beginning on Monday the 30th, a special sanitation program involving all infirmaries and golden age homes will be implemented over three days concluding on April 3rd. 
This program will provide 100 jobs for persons to work at Golden Age homes and infirmaries and will last for three months. Additionally, 3,000 students under the Poor Relief Department's portfolio will receive lunch on a daily basis. He also spoke on provisions for water. The municipal corporation will be moving to provide water to parishes which are affected by severe drought conditions and will ensure that all our facilities across the country have adequate water. The ban on visits to infirmaries will be extended. The ban that was placed on the visits to infirmaries have now been moved from the original date which was 14 days to now 60 days. You know, I should say the, to 30 days and the ban on new admissions have been pushed to 60 days. The ban on new amusement licenses will be extended and the markets will continue to open from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Giovanni Dennis, TVJ News. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister is appealing to younger Jamaicans not to abandon senior citizens. Those 75 years and older are being told to stay at home unless it's absolutely necessary to leave. So we expect them to stay in as much as possible, distance themselves as much as possible, even from family. But it is still important that the community around them cares for them, keeps in touch with them, and help them during this difficult time with food, getting their medicines for them. Very important. This is a time when we all don't have enough, but our humanity and our love for each other should bring us to share whatever little we have. And with the several reports of people being physically and verbally abused if they sneeze or cough in public, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton is warning against stigmatization if a person gets COVID-19 adjust their minds to the reality of COVID-19 and to place yourself in the context of a year from now. Not a prophet, but I'm prepared to say that COVID-19 would be known different from H1N1 or some other form of influenza. In other words, people are going to get it or avoid it with a vaccine or treat it if they have it and life will go back to normality. Right now, it is being treated as leprosy or something that you have to run away from, not just the, from getting it, which we appreciate, but run away from people who might have it or you suspect have it, to the point where persons are being abusive and even threatening. And it really is not the approach that we would like to adopt. We want you to be concerned, but you don't, we don't want you to treat people as outcasts because you suspect that they have it. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. We have more stories right after these messages. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. A policeman and a soldier were shot last night at a checkpoint along Spanish Town Road, St. Andrew. It's understood that about 10 p.m., members of the security forces were doing spot checks along Coal Lane when a taxi drove up. A man armed with a gun exited a vehicle and opened fire, hitting the police and soldier. The gunman escaped. Head of the Criminal Investigation Branch, Assistant Commissioner Clinton Leng, told TVJ News that a 16-year-old girl who was reportedly in the company of the suspect has been taken into custody. He's urging persons with information to call 119 or the Hunts Bay Police. Two brothers are dead following a crash along the Golden Grove Main Road in St. Thomas Tuesday night. Dead are 30-year-old Adrian Williams, a bus driver, and his brother, 29-year-old Lando Williams, a security guard. They are both of Wheeler Field in the parish. Reports are that about 8.30, 
The motorcycle which was being driven by Adrian was heading towards Golden Grove when the driver reportedly lost control and collided with a Toyota RAV4 which was traveling in the opposite direction. President of the St. Thomas Taxi Association, Kurt Brown, had a reminder for motorists. And we are encouraging our members and all the drivers in Jamaica to be careful when you drive on the road because this is serious time and with coronavirus that is already an uh, issue and a problem to us and we want to be driving on the road safely so we can save lives. It's understood that the motorcycle was being driven without a light when it collided. The driver of the RAV4 was rushed to hospital. Stakeholders in Manchester have completed a review of their response to a deadly fire in the parish. They say they have learned lessons which will help to f in future disasters. More from Oshane Masters. It's been weeks since that fire at the Fiscal Gas Station in Mandeville, Manchester. But the incident is still fresh in the minds of those who responded, particularly the emergency crews. That's why the leaders of the fire and police departments sat down with local government authorities and other stakeholders to review the response to the fire and plan for future disasters. We will be engaging more of the simulation exercises and um, that we could even do better. Part of this response is triage, which is very important. I mean, determining who needs critical care first and what areas they should be treated in. And as Mr. Miller suggested, we do have backup mechanisms that if we're overwhelmed with what we can deal with locally, we do reach out to the other hospitals in the regions, whether it's to transfer the less critical patients out or to bring staff and resources in. For the fire and police departments, their business is saving lives and property. A big part of that is quick response to a scene. But one concern from the fire department stems from whether residents can even be depended on to report disasters such as fires anymore. On social media before we got to the scene, no one took the time out to call the fire brigade. Right? And I'm saying that this society that we're living in, you know, is, is, I don't think it's a matter of training, it's, it's, a, it's a culture. Hence, the need for members of the public to be sensitized on health and safety measures. There is really the need for the public education awareness, as said by Dr. Earlier and, of course, CEO Hospital, that when there is danger, we should actually move away from the danger instead of moving towards the danger. The fire at the Fesco gas station claimed one life and damaged over a dozen cars. Two persons injured in the fire remain hospitalized over a month later. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. And it's time now for a preview of, what, of what's coming up in this evening's Health Report. In the next edition of the Health Report, we'll look at ways in which persons can boost their immune system in light of COVID-19. If you eat a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and lean proteins, with some wholesome starches, staple ground provisions, your body will receive all these vitamins and minerals. That's the health report this evening in primetime news. And now for today's healthy living tip. Don't take your supplements on an empty stomach. Space out your supplements when you take them. And talk to your doctor about what you're taking. In regional news, Barbados on Tuesday recorded another case of COVID-19, bringing the number of confirmed cases to 18. The latest case is a 36-year-old man. Tracing has started to identify all persons he came in contact with. In the meantime, the 35 Trinidad and Tobago nationals who were stranded in Barbados are now in quarantine. Journalist at CBC TV8 Barbados, Ryan Boom, gave an update this morning on TVJ Smile Jamaica. They are here still. They're in mandatory quarantine at their own expense, however. Uh, but we, but they, the two leaders on both sides have been in discussion about that situation. Now, TVJ Sports understands that a window between July and October has now been identified.
for the staging of the Jamaica International Invitational Meet. A source close to the meet told our news center that the May 2 event will be postponed due to the spread of COVID-19 in Jamaica. It's also understood that organizers will make a decision on a date when the new Diamond League calendar is made available after the first three meets on the schedule were postponed. It's believed Diamond League organizers are looking to schedule their meets between July and October, and we expect that an official release will be expected to our new center in the coming days. And that's it for the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon. <laughs>